He's one of the stars of the HBO hit show Ballers that was picked up for a second season when Ariel Kebel was on the show. The very day she came in here, so something good is going to happen for you as well, Omar Miller. Thanks for coming here on the program. Good hey to see man. you. man. Thanks for having me. You are. Uh, it's my pleasure. And, and you just told me that we have met before on the set of a legendary program. Listen, one of the biggest of all time. And that, that show, which, which show was it? Go ahead. A little show entitled CSI Miami. Yeah. Yeah. Cue the music. Take the shades. Cue the shades. <laughs> yes, yes. When uh, so, uh, who were you on the episode that I that I shot that one? <laughs> what were you? Who were you on the episode? Well, I actually, <laughs> <laughs> I was a regular at that point. Well, you know Thank what I'm you. talking about. I had no, gotten my SAG card and all. No, you you know what I'm talking about though. I was yeah. I was on the program as my. I wasn't myself. Okay? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. I was playing. Somebody is a, a an announcer, you know. Yep. They, th that's what they told me. You know yep. what I mean. Yep. And and so, I, I was interviewing a wrestler or something like that. <laughs> yes. When I said that, so what was your what what were you you were investigating something yeah, like on yeah, the show? So, so right. I was in at that point. I was I started as a tech guy right. in the lab. Right. You know, and you were in the crazy shift. My, my, I was on that. There you right. go. You right. remember that? Yes. And then uh, and then they all of a sudden they gave me a gun, and I was like, "This is awesome. Let's right. go do it." Right. And so I was out on the scene investigating who that murder, who that uh, wrestler killed. Right. And so, you know, I had to find a hair fiber follicle around where you are. And every now and then, I get my $3.03 checks for that episode. That's and because the big checks are all going to Mr. other Caruso. people who were higher on the call sheet than you and I. <laughs> Mr. Caruso. <laughs> Mr. Caruso with the glasses, man. Mr. And Caruso is doing just fine. He is. And I, but I just God remember, I remember, I remember, though, when he was on the set, things got a little quieter. They got a little uh, let me tell you something. People came. It was like I imagine what it's like when Tom Brady shows up. It's like <laughs> it was. Uh, you mind your p's and q's. People weren't messing around when he, he sucks showed all up. The air out of Not the room. with David Caruso. Uh, yeah. 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 No, I'm telling you, he commanded respect. And I think another thing that people didn't know is that it, he's a lot bigger than people know. He's not a small guy. He's no, he's a tall. Like, he's a tall dude. Yeah, he was a tall dude. But he didn't. The, is it, but he would always sort of hunch down. You that know, was and, all character and stuff. And look and look over. You know, look and at you with the, the, yeah, the lean. <laughs> And the thing that he always did, Omar, that, that I thought was next level, is <laughs> he would, many people would deliver the line by taking their sunglasses off. He would deliver the line, putting them on. He was now, a master. That, right then and there. It's just, you know, this is, listen, I we took respect. note, you I'm just note. saying. And now you're, now you're working with Dwayne Johnson and The Rock on this program. Well, how's, it, how's this uh, experience been like for you on Ballers? You know what? Uh, uh, People are loving it, which is great. Mm -hmm. It's a great experience. I was talking to somebody, uh, one of my friends the other day, and I was like, wow, I haven't really seen people go crazy in public like this since right. I was in 8 Mile. Right. And for me, that movie changed my life. Mm -hmm. and so this has been a very interesting experience because people are... People are fascinated with sports. It's why, you know, you're here. It's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. It's great. And and we're giving you a glimpse of a couple different sides of it. You right. Know? And you play Charles Green on this program, a retired player. And I've been around a lot of retired players. And one thing that people sort of take for granted is that uh, when when a player retires, they, they have it all figured out. And the NFL has been doing a lot of trying to tell kids when they're 22, 23, 24 that, hey, on average you will have to find something else to do in life when you're 30. Hey, I mean, that's the serious reality of this situation. And it's tough. I mean, because really, to get to that level, to mm -hmm. be an elite athlete at, in the NFL, yeah. you know, the grown man league, listen, you have had to commit yourself to get there. And this is your total identity, more or less. Yes. I had a lot of friends when I was in school, the coach would tell them directly, we didn't bring you out here to go to school. We brought you out here to play football. Mm -hmm. And... and then when you get out of school and then you, we actually address this in a future episode. Actually, okay. it's a really cool scene where we talk about this. But, um, you know, then you get out of school and you work, which is the NFL. You have all of these different things coming at you nonstop. You're a young person with all this money and all this access and all these options. Right. You know, there's a lot of crazy things that are bound to happen. Yeah. And then when they're in the league, too, crazy things happen as well. I've, I've met some players who, when they're checking into a hotel room, they, they see people who are on the couch um, in the hotel lobby, Googling their name, like on a laptop, on their phones, trying it's, to check out who this person is because it looks like there's an athlete who's checking into a hotel. See, right now. and it's bizarre in this one sense, too. Yeah. If you think about it, there's not many NFL players that you know by face other than the quarterbacks. Yeah. 
Because there's usually, you know, that, that face math that's in front of them there. Yeah, exactly. well, but besides right. that, there's also, you know, the NFL is pretty stringent about keeping your helmet on Very most so. of the time. And yes. so mm -hmm. the quarterbacks are the guys that are promoted. You have a handful of receivers that people know. Yeah. But by and large, other guys like the guy that I play, Charles Green, yes. you wouldn't know him walking around unless you were a real avid fan of that team right. and that guy. Mm -hmm. So he's dealing with a lot of stuff, and he's going through, you know, a little bit of a midlife crisis, and you got the little honey sending you pictures, and what, what are you going to do? It's a lot of pressure for the young man. Yeah, I've got <laughs> Omar Miller here on the, on the Rich Eisen Show. So you are a native of Southern California. Yeah. Spent some time in Detroit, right? Did I you? spent some time in Detroit making the movie, and then okay. after that, just hanging out in Detroit because I love Detroit. Did you love this but, but, but for some reason, everybody thinks, as of Wikipedia, that I'm from Detroit. Okay, so we need to cross that one off the list here. And in that regard, <laughs> so so are you are you a fan of the Dodgers, even though you're from... yeah. Anaheim. How you know, does that happen? You Omar? know what? what? We... The Dodgers actually drafted my brother. My brother and I both played baseball, and the Dodgers drafted my brother. Okay. And uh, and I don't know. I was in the American League. I've always been a fan of the New York Yankees. Always. Both I mean, because you're just... clearly a smart individual with a successful <laughs> resume, and so you understand. And when what I was winning a kid, means. Uh -huh. they had Ricky Henderson, and he was he was your guy, Ricky. I mean, I can make an argument that Ricky's, you know, top five of all time. He, Ricky is incredible. You could absolutely make that argument. Yeah. Nobody of, dominates a game like Ricky Henderson. He could dominate. I mean, just a walk. All, it's a, could you got, start you're a rally. in a tight game. You're mm -hmm. in a one. You're in a zero zero right. one nothing game in the seventh or eighth. You walk Ricky Henderson. That might be enough. Yeah, but him in the hands of Billy Martin was the the most dangerous Ricky Henderson weapon <laughs> possible when he was obviously in Oakland, and yep. then when he had some time with the Yankees. 185 just, stolen bases. He would be on first base and then on third in the bat of an eye. But the the snatch catch would always drive me crazy. He, why were you scared? He didn't yes. drop him. Yes. You don't I was know, just, I he's always got thought, it under control. I, I understand that, but I'm, you know, the fan is is short for fanatic, and yes. um, so I would just see him snatch catch it, and I'm like, I had I had nightmares of the ball winding up, rolling around no, the warning no, no, track. No, 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 that was just Ricky being cool, man. He was in Oakland. He was popping his collar after home runs. After <laughs> walk. After, after a walk. He just, you know why? Because he, he was coming back home. Ricky knew he was coming back home when you walked him. That's it. <laughs> That's your bad. You shouldn't have done that. So Ricky was your guy. Ricky Henderson loved Ricky. Now, if he just said Omar. Omar could say Ricky is a top five guy. That would have been next level if you would have gone. You know, Ricky, if I would have went third person. Been, yeah, Omar third person. thinks Ricky's a top listen, five listen, guy. Listen, listen, I'm not, I'm not that that deep. You know, Ricky broke the record, picked up the base, and said, "Today, I am the greatest." <laughs> That's <laughs> an incredible amount of confidence well, there. Well, now you know, Ricky, Ricky played for Toronto too. Did Ricky Henderson? Play Are for you Toronto? crazy? Arguably the greatest correct. baseball team of all time. Okay. Those two years of now, Toronto. Now you, you've heard the story. I don't know if this is true or not. It's so a great I'll, story, this, though. You know where I'm going oh, with this. Course. The John Olrood story? I don't know. No, okay. I'm not familiar. John Olrood was playing for the Mets. And, you know, John Olrood, you know, uh, wore a helmet in the field mm -hmm. because he had a head injury, uh, you know, earlier in his career. So he wore a helmet in the field. And Ricky, you know, winds up on first base, and Olrood just says, hey, Ricky. And Ricky said, you know, I used to play with a guy who would wear a helmet in the field at first base, too. And <laughs> Olrood's like, it, yeah. yeah. Me. I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's one of those Mikey died a pop rock stories, you know, back in the day, uh, if it's a, a wives' tale or not, but that's one of my favorite stories. Let me tell you, one stories. of my favorite stories sure. is I got to have dinner with Ricky Henderson, and it was like, I felt like I was 12 years old. I, I was so excited. Yeah. And Ricky wouldn't let me pay for dinner. No kidding. And, and was he a fan of your movies? He, your work he, he was. He was. And it How just cool blew my that? mind. Yeah, honestly, it That's blew my great, mind. Man. I had a great situation. I had dinner with him, uh, Devon White, Jesse Barfield. It was like, oh my I, gosh. I was, oh, wow. oh, no, That's no, no, Blue no, no, Jays no. Of great and, and, and leading up to great, Jesse Barfield. Well, he was a Yankee, too. I mean, he was a free swinger. He would tick me off, too, because all you had to do was just pitch him something up and in one, and then the next Lowing one just away, throw up, boom. Away slide and he would, yeah, he would but, swing over the But when Jesse got a hold of him, I mean, you know. Hey, I, I think the, the thing I hate is when King Griffey robbed Jesse and he gave it to him. When King Griffey yeah. Jr. robbed him of that home run at yeah, Yankee Stadium. Yeah, that's right. Hey, you remember that? <laughs> he climbed King the wall Griffey and he Jr. robbed him. Griffey Jr. always saved his best for Yankee Stadium. Although the guy who was the biggest Yankee killer of the Mariners by far was Edgar Martinez. Edgar Martinez 
had the Yankees in his back pocket. Whenever he wanted to. Always. He was the one who... who, who He's drew, the one who got the double down junior, the line and drove in junior. Off Jack McDowell, who had Come no on, business man. being in that game. And... 1995. And, wow, that was Jack McDowell. Here. Yeah. And, yeah. and besides that, yes. you know what? If you go run that footage back, I don't know if anybody can grab it. They show the Yankee bench that year. They show the Yankee bench, and they're all mm. devastated. And you see Derek Jeter for the very first time. He's sitting there, and he's looking like, yeah, I got not this. me. I yeah, got exactly. this. Never again. This I've is got it. This. I'm, I'm done with this. Because next year, he, he that was his rookie year, his full rookie Ring year in 96. Up. Ring him up. Can you stick around? Absolutely. But, but listen, if you're going to be talking Yankee stories like this, you and I could talk all day. Sorry, Brockman, it's not your birthday yet. <laughs> and I'm just going to go sit on the couch over no, there. No, don't do that. Mind. Because, again, Xander Bogarts wears number two. He's a Red Sox fan. Because he's a Jeter guy. And Bogarts is your best player right now. There's yeah. no doubt. Hopefully and he wears someday, number two for a good reason. Hopefully someday Bogarts can uh, fake jump into the stands and kind of come oh. out with some ketchup on his hey face, man. too. Hey, oh man. That wasn't gosh. fake, first. Secondly, Bogarts is a potential five-tooler, man. That kid can really play the yeah. game. That's he's true. Really good. And he's, he's really good. And he's got a great head on his shoulders because he chose number two to put on his back. Because <laughs> he's got a good idol. Seriously. That's the way you roll. That's the way we roll here on The Rich Eisen Show. Omar Miller, who plays Charles Green on HBO's Ballers, is here. 844-204-RICH is the number to dial. Uh, we've got Tyron Matthew in hour number three of the Arizona Cardinals. Don't go anywhere. We're back with more in a moment. We've got Omar <laughs> Miller of Ballers uh -huh. here on The Rich Eisen Show. Uh, welcome back to the radio audience uh, and the TV only segment. We showed a, a clip of Ballers and then Chris Law, who likes to play game shows here on the program. It's his birthday today, by the way. Oh, uh, happy birthday. Hey, he shares a birthday with Alex Trebek. So our poll question is your favorite game show host of all time. Chris Law is in that mix. Is Chris Law actually beating Alex Trebek in the poll question right now? He is beating Alex Trebek. Wow. He is now tied with Bob Barker at 35%. Wow. Wow, You're getting right. a lot of love out there. Well, it's his birthday. You know? It's yeah. his birthday. It's a troll-free birthday. So go ahead and ask When well, you guys were talking about Ricky Henderson, you're obviously a big fan of his. Uh, he's moved around quite a bit. He played 24 Major League Baseball seasons. How many teams do you think he played for? Different teams. He had a couple. He played for, like, the Yankees two different times. So we'll just say. Age two. Oh, so we, okay. So how many different bounces? Different organizations. Different oh, organizations that oh, he played for. Oh, wow. 24-year career. I mean, if you're talking about just individual teams, what, Ricky's probably at like 12? Nine teams, wow. 13 changes. 13 changed, changes. See, 13 I was close. 13 team changes. So for, wow. if these were Bob Barker prices, right, rules, you would have gone over, gone over on the number of organizations. I would but, be eliminated. But, you, you, but you'd, be, you'd be crushing the number of changes. You so came one on. You were right there. You are closest without going over on that one, Omar. Very well done. Do I get a Barker's Beauty for uh, that? We don't have that particular <laughs> parting gift for you, but you are on Ballers, so at least that works for you in that regard. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday well nights at 10 Rich. p.m. Eastern here <laughs> on the program. You, you have a question yeah, for Yeah, I got, I got a question. So 8 Mile kind of put you on the map. Eminem was the biggest star in the world at that point in 2002. Now you're with in Ballers with The Rock, who's the biggest star in the world right now. Can you kind of compare those two phenomenons of working with these two guys? Yeah, it's a trip. First and foremost, I would never want to be the biggest star in the world because it, there's a lot that goes into that. It's exhausting. I see these guys. You know, I've been around a lot of these guys. Um, and you know what? Dwayne is a lot more uh, uh, social. He's a lot more open. And Marshall's very introverted until you get to know him. When mm -hmm. you get to know him, he's, you know, he's sit around and talk about sports and everything else. But, yeah. but Dwayne has literally come into my world. Everybody. Like, you know, he's walking down the street and some girls start giggling because they're school girls. And he's like, come on, let's take a picture. Yeah, and I'm going to lift oh, weights. That's awesome. And he's like, he, he, he never sleeps. The dude is, uh, this work ethic is incredible. Both of them. Now, this is one thing that I'll say about, in general, everybody that I've worked with that is, like, really, really high up on the success pole, their work ethic is incredible. Mm. I watched Eminem do a 20-hour day on set one day and then literally perform a concert that night. And then the next morning, we were back on set. Back on set. There you go. And work, work ethic, only way you can beat Bob Barker in a poll question. That's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> or, or ask the question on a July 22nd. <laughs> or ask the question that's, on July 22nd. That's another fact. That's another fact. I'm still, I'm two hours in in my birthday gift that I will not troll you on your birthday. Um, and Caruso is the biggest star in the world, too. Let's not forget Caruso. No, 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 no. CSI Miami is everywhere on this planet. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it was yeah. the biggest show in the world for, I think, like you five could probably, or six years. You could probably walk around a city ten times on the way and people come up to you and say you're on CSI Miami. 
anywhere you want to go, I can get off the plane and they know who I am. That's a, that's it's a crazy. Story. That's incredible. Yeah, and and I, let me tell you, he works hard. That guy was there before, you know, like he would, if his call time was six, yeah. he was there at 5.30, They don't hand you a pair of shades all willy-nilly. No, no. <laughs> they will not, not nor will all. they hand you a big fat check. <laughs> <laughs> willy-nilly, I've learned. At Omar Miller on Twitter, uh, he plays Charles Green on Ballers, Sunday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern on HBO. Thanks for coming in. Come back anytime. Thank you, sir. We'll talk some more Yankees next time you come in. Omar Miller here on the program. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.